Hi, I'm Kevin Eikenberry, and I'm here to help you reach your potential as a leader and a human being. Welcome to Remarkable TV. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to be more persuasive. Are you ready? All right, so there are lots of parts to, to the persuasion puzzle. Lots of things that you can do to work on, to get better, to polish your skills and become more persuasive. Uh, some of those include like the word choice. Our words matter, our intonation and the rate of our speech and whether we pause or not, those things matter. Our facial expressions and our gestures and our eye contact, those things matter. The location, where we give the, have the communication, uh, the context of the communication, all matters. And of course, the message itself matters. None of these things are the biggest part of the puzzle. Uh, we have some control over all those things, but there's a bigger part of the puzzle that has nothing to do with any of that stuff. It has everything to do with your audience, which leads me to today's tweet. The art of persuasion starts with understanding your audience. Until you do, you can't persuade anyone. So persuasion and influence are synonyms. We have control over the stuff I talked about earlier. We have control over what we say, how we say it, how we look when we say it, the context of where we say it, and the message itself. We have control over those things, but we have no control over the other person receiving our message. And we can't persuade until they get it. And the only way to help influence them, the only way to help them get it is to make sure that what we're delivering makes sense to them. So the other person or people have to feel like we get them, that we understand their wants, their needs, their desires, their goals, and until that, and when they feel like we're really speaking to them, they're open to being persuaded. And so we got to remember that persuasion is always about influence. We don't have control over that process. So the next time that you're planning a persuasive communication, start by efforting and learning more about your audience. How can you understand their wants, needs, and questions? The more time you spend doing that, the better chance you've got of having persuasion take place. So if you found this episode helpful, I hope you did. I hope you'll choose to subscribe to this channel so you can get future episodes. I hope that you'll share it with some friends that you think would value it. And if you do that, they'll be happy. I'll certainly be happy and you can feel good about helping others. Everybody wins. If you have a question that you'd like me to answer in a future episode, or if you've got a comment about this particular uh, video, please put those in the comments down below. We'll be responding to those and hopefully answering your questions in a future episode. And lastly, I want to talk about uh, the fact that communication and persuasion go hand in hand. The reality is you can't, most all communication has some persuasion aspect to it. And so that's why we've woven the concepts and ideas of persuasion throughout our workshop called communicating for results. So if you'd like to be a more confident, effective, and uh, a communicator that actually gets results, I'd encourage you to join us for this lively, interactive, engaging, and informative workshop where we help you become a more effective communicator to get the results that you set out to get when you opened your mouth or picked up your pen. So if you want to learn more about that program and how you can get involved or how you can even bring that program to your organization, just click the link below and it'll tell you all about it. And we look forward to seeing you real soon. Thanks again.